Hi, this is Mo Twister, and this is the story of how my dog was stolen and murdered. Well, a family left heartbroken and angry tonight after they say crews from a flooring company took their dog right from their yard. The beloved pup later found dead. Last week, where we're having construction here at our house, it's kind of one of those fears that you have when you have people over that they leave the door open and your dog runs away or something. But my dog is, is pretty old, so he's not the type to run very far. And we spent uh, the whole night driving around the neighborhood uh, looking for him. Nobody saw anything. However, our neighbors said, hey, I got some camera footage uh, that is constantly rolling, so let me go ahead and check. They were able to find my dog wandering from my house to the house next door. And then we saw the construction workers, they proceeded to tie a rope around his neck and then they put him in their vehicle. So they were working while the dog was in the vehicle. Obviously in Vegas, it's 104 degrees that day. But my wife calls me and says, hey, we have video footage of him being stolen and the guys that took him are here. I went home, I confronted the guys who stole my dog. I asked them, hey, did you see my dog? And they said, no, we didn't see any dog. And then I pulled out my phone and said, that's you right there. And he says, okay, I'm sorry, I took your dog. I don't know where it is. I called the company that they worked for. They came over. We found out after a lot of arguing that it was the owner of the company that told them to take the dog. So they tried to pay me off. They're asking me, you know, would I take 5,000, 10,000, you know, 20,000. When you talk about family members, there is no price. I'm not interested. I just want my dog back. Bamboo, we got suspended from the radio show for five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Sorry. They said that, no, we, we, we panicked. We left the dog outside of your community. We were just scared. I said, you could have brought the dog back. It's a 30 second drive from the gate to my house. They apologized. Um, I accepted the apology. And then the very next day, it started to kind of spread around in dog, dog loving pages and stuff like that. That in the morning when he was found, it was found by somebody who, you know, saw it on Facebook. So they sent us a message and they said, hey, is this the dog that you guys are talking about? Because it looks like him from the picture. We found out that our dog was dropped off in an open kind of desert area right next to their house. So it was impossible that my dog walked from where they said he dropped them to their house, which is about a 45 minute drive. Impossible for a dog in the heat, any dog, especially my dog, to travel. My wife called me. She was hysterical, broken down, just destroyed, you know? My children don't know my dog has passed away because when they found out he was stolen, uh, they've been crying every day about it. What more if I tell them that he's been killed? 10 years, you kind of pamper your dog. You know, our dog is, our dog is never a dirty dog. <laughs> Doesn't go out in the mud. You know, it's got a pretty good lawyer. When they show you the photo, it's like, I've never seen my dog that dirty and that insignificant to some to somebody because he's so significant to us so yesterday when animal control called and said hey uh we've done we've done the autopsy uh, it's not autopsy but i think that's the human uh necropsy yeah necropsy or necropsy when we, we've done that you can pick him up now i am having a hard time picking him up uh they said we'll give you 10 days to pick up your dog so we're at day number two and we have yet discussed how we're going to get him because i refuse to believe that that dirty, left for dead dog is our dog. It's still hard. Until today, we, we ask each other, like, what do we do now, right? I know the detectives are on the criminal case, but what do, you, do we do about, you know, the other parts of this, right? Apart from Mo, like, Bamboo was my first family in the U.S. My son, when he finally was able to move to the U.S., Bamboo was his first best friend. Yeah. It was so tiny, and then there's this really playful bulldog, so their energy kind of met, you know, at the same level. But Bamboo was always very safe with him, so he didn't worry, so... Yeah, he's he, he's pretty heartbroken. Like, that's all that's all our son knows, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Many people know this story, right? If you've moved somewhere, or if you're not really one to have a big barcada, you you have a dog. It was a crisp autumn day in Central Park when romance is in the air and a bulldog's breath is in your face. <laughs> I moved to New York from Manila. I lived right across the street from Central Park. You know, everybody's got a dog. And I was like, oh man, you know, everybody's walking around Central Park with a dog. So I got a dog that I knew wasn't so active because you know I'm kind of a homebody. Bamboo, you want some melon? Catch. Hell yeah, that's talent right there. <laughs>
He was, you know, just the perfect kind of companion when you move to a new country and you don't really know anybody. I had no friends in New York, so, and it could be your friend, it could be your brother, it could be a family member, like it was in my case. It came from a companion to a family dog, from a family dog to a home protector, even you could dare say a third parent to your children, right? And because they're the elder sibling in the, you know, we always called him Kuya, you know, he was not the family dog, he was their Kuya. We just want to thank everyone who's been helping, right? Um, again, you know, like through this platform, we hope that this doesn't happen again, or we're helping each other out. Well, let's let's help other families so that may or be going through the same that we're going through with our pets or families. And it's hard to accept that he's gone. However, with everyone's um, care, you know, everyone reaching out, it, it's. It's helping us get through this and know that we're not alone. So thank you so much. Um, we we hope that um, those that did this to Bamboo, you know, that it's not forgotten and it's not one of those things where something happened, social media erupted, and then obviously they, and then it's gone, right? But as we've seen with other um, cases from other issues that we have in our country today, so. I always want to take the chance when I'm in front of, or when my wife is in front of like a, a a media outlet to show gratitude that none of this exists. None, we don't even get this far in finding out who it is to what can be done, if not for the help of neighbors, strangers, people on social media. It's been incredible and kind of humbling in that sense, but it doesn't remove the amount of rage and pain and, and all of that. It just, I am thankful because it helps our cause, whether it be law enforcement to, to people they work with, that. This is not their first time that they've pulled off something like this. So if you think about hiring people and you find out they're related to this, they could steal something from you. They could steal your dog. They could kill your dog. Uh, God forbid they could do worse, right? We're not asking for any support. We're not asking for any, you know, GoFundMe page or any of those things. I just want these people to, um, again, to, to know what it's like to be us this week.